Hello friends, today we will do chapter number 7 of our novel David Copperfield, Old and New Friends. I finally choose a profession. After discussions with my aunt, I decided to become a lawyer. My training began at very old but grand looking law offices of Spenlow and Jorkins in London. My aunt was very helpful full and found me a small but cozy room to rent nearby. Oh, how confident and free I felt living in London as a young bachelor. I went out most evenings as I now had money to enjoy myself. One night when I was leaving the theater, I saw my old school friend, Stafford. He still had thick blonde hair and was more handsome than ever. We shook hands warmly and Steerforth told me that he was now a student at Oxford University. I always knew you would be a success, Steerforth. You look just like you did back at Salem House, only better and older of course. I must say you are looking very well too, Daisy. You still look young and innocent and fresh. Steerforth had always liked to call me Daisy, ever since our days at Salem House. When he first saw me, he had said that I reminded him of a fresh Daisy at a sunrise. And I quite liked the nickname myself. Steerforth and I saw each other quite often while he was in London and we become close again. I even asked him to visit and come to the Pagotis in Yarmouth with me. I wasn't sure what he would think of their simple ways because he was from a different social class but from the movement moment we arrived in Yarmouth Steerforth seemed to love everything about it it's incredible that they made a home out of this old boat on many occasions we sat inside Mr. Pegotti's house drinking eating and laughing with the Pegotti's we had arrived at a good time because the family were celebrating Ham and Emily's engagement. I was happy for Emily but I would always remember her as little Emily. Ham was a good hearted and hard working fellow and Emily, a young woman now, worked as a dressmaker. She seemed satisfied with her life, but I think that our stories about London reminded her of the old desire she had to be a lady. When Steerforth spoke, that desire seemed to come back. London sounds so existing, exciting. I wish I could live there. Then why don't you? And I could show you around. Steerforth. Emily and Ham are going to be married and they will live here. Oh yes, I forgot. Well then, a toast to life and happiness by the sea. We all raised our glasses, but Emily did not look very happy. Steerforth seemed to like the fisherman's life in Yarmouth. He even bought a boat before we left. He called it the Little Emily. I thought this was strange, but it didn't mean much to me at the time. We went back to London and I was very busy with my training at Spenlow and Jorkins. I was doing well at the office, so Mr. Spenlow invited me to his house for dinner one evening. It was then that I met his beautiful and delicate daughter Dora. I immediately fell madly in love with her 
and don't know how I concentrated on my work after that. I had spent hours daydreaming about Dora, my princess. I chased Dora for months until she finally agreed to marry me. Everything in my life seemed to be going well. I worked part-time as a writer and saved enough money to buy us a little house. Everyone was happy for me, particularly Aunt Betsy. She would often hug me and say, I was a fool for leaving you and your mother when you were born. You have turned out better than any niece I could have hoped for. Agnes seemed happy for me too and she and Dora become best friends, even though they were so different from each other. Although they were the same age, Agnes told me. Agnes seemed older and wiser, and my Dora acted like a sweet child, sometimes sighing and playing with the curls in her hair. Davy, I am a silly little thing. Perhaps you have should choose her. Something clever like Agnes instead of me. What are you saying, my love? Hush now. I love you as you are. And more than anything in the world. In the world. Oh, David, the world's a large place. Thank you, friends.